Hello and welcome to the video. This is a very quick video for those of you out there who have been asking many saucy how you get the Cobb LEDs, the super bright LEDs that many saucy make working with iNav. Here we have an iNav flight controller and the trick is that you need an RC switch. Now, if we go onto the computer and have a very quick look at the information about the Cobb LEDs, it kind of shows you how to put it all together. But if we go and have a look at the PDF manual, the information we actually need is in here. If you're lucky enough to be running beta flight, then you can use this cute thing here where you can play with resources. And using those resources, you can connect the activation pin, the central pin on it into beta flight to make it all work. However, if you are not using beta flight, you can use a Menace RC switch. Now this RC switch just needs one wire that goes from the RC switch to the activation pin. And that will then, that enable pin will allow you to then control it via a PWM output. Now, this is a PWM output, so you could just plug this directly into a receiver. So if you didn't have a flight controller at all, this would work in the same way. Both of these pieces are not particularly expensive. I'll put links down below to both of them if you are interested. Now, let's go back on the bench and I'll show you how I've done this. So if I just have everything powered up, I have the receiver on. If I flick the switch on the radio, I've got it set up for this switch here. Then I can turn those cob LEDs on and off from within iNav. And one of the things that you're probably spotting here, turn the LEDs off because they're very bright, is I have an RC switch connected by that single flying lead into the middle of that enable pin on the cob LEDs, and then it's plugged in to a spare channel. Now, what I've done on the radio is I have created an extra channel for that switch. So if we just go into the model menu, if I just zoom across very quickly into the output, then there on channel eight, I've just created an output for channel eight for the SD switch, which is up here in the corner. I've just called it LED. That is all I've done. Now, if we just power off the flight controller for a moment and we plug it into the computer, Let's show you what you need to do in INF to make it work, because it's pretty easy and straightforward. So in INAV, we'll click on connect. And then the first thing we need to do is to just check in the receiver tab, which channel is moving. So as I move the switch that I've assigned to channel eight, we can absolutely see it moving there. Now, the cool thing is we can push any of these spare channels that we're not using for flight modes and arming and other things out of one of the spare outputs. So in the mixer, what I've done is I've added, if I just delete it, I'll add it again so you can see it. Add new mixer rule. It's got an output on the next output, the next servo output that's available. I'll just say, give me radio control channel eight. That's the one that's moving we'll say save and reboot. And all that's done is just put that back. So now we have the normal controls that the output via the iNav software. And then we have the next one, which is gonna output the PWM value that we need to run the switch. And that's where I've plugged the switch into. So if we now go into outputs, we'll be able to see down here that we have a new output. And as I flick the switch on the radio, there it is. It just appears. And this is really handy. You can use this for doing things like presenting pan and tilts and all kinds of stuff, just simply pushing through the channel. So let's disconnect from that again. Unplug and power it from the battery because it needs the battery to run. Let's power everything up. We'll see a brief moment the LEDs will come on before the RC switch initialized. And now as I flick the switch, it turns those cob LEDs on and off. So that's the trick. Uh, unfortunately, this of course will only work with an iNav flight controller that has a spare PWM output because it doesn't have the same kind of resource things that beta flight does, which again is covered in that manual. However, potentially we, did, we didn't have to do it that way. I could unplug it 
a bit dangerous doing this while it's live. Now the switch isn't getting a valid signal. The LEDs are on. However, I could run this directly from the receiver itself, plug it into channel eight on the receiver. And as I flick the switch, it still works in exactly the same way. So if you don't have an iNav flight controller that has a spare PWM output on the flight controller, if you have a receiver that has one, you can do that as well. But it also means that with Cobb LEDs, you can actually put these in and control them in models that don't have a flight controller. So in boats, cars, trucks, those kind of things, where you want very bright, high intensity LEDs that you can control on a switch, this is the way to do it. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.